Microsoft knows what's good for us and will no longer allow us to disable Windows Defender. Many people have noticed on my script, I have a disable Defender uh, selection that you could actually click, but it no longer does anything. Well, since basically late 2020, they've instituted a way of blocking Windows Defender. I used to do group policies in business to disable this, but uh, again, that's no longer even there. And as far as registry settings, they are just ignored if they are added. So let's get into this topic. Uh, I wanna show you kind of the old way of doing things and what no longer works, and then also show you how to actually disable this now. How can we go about doing it? And I really don't want to give you any third-party downloads. I like to interact directly with any operating system I'm on, so I never tell you to download anything, and you really shouldn't be downloading anything from any third party. With that said, let's get on our desktop and get into it. So here's an old G-Hacks article where they kind of go through the different ways we use to disable our Defender. Uh, there's also the tried and true way of going through settings, which I will touch on here in a second because they added a new setting that is kind of buried uh, to where we can actually interface with it. But the first one, people used to just create group policies done in business, done here at home, you know, all kinds of different ways. As long as you had pro or higher, you could do this. And if you're a home user and you want to get involved in group policy, it's disabled by default, but I'm going to leave an article to actually enable group policy. As a home user, you can actually get in here and change a lot of tweaks through group policy on a home edition, which is actually really nice. So this is a little cool manual modification and I'll leave a link in the description for it. But getting back here, even with this group policy, it actually is disappeared. This says it was updated in August, 2020. And I think this actually went in a little bit earlier than that. So this is a little misleading. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up group policy and show you where this used to reside. And just go start run gp edit dot msc to pull up group policy and then we just go into admin windows components and then it's all the way down at the bottom is windows defender and you see all it is is smart screen which is actually just part of our browser and then we also have down here windows security which there is no disable antivirus anymore. There actually used to be a windows defender uh, key that we could actually go in here and say hey turn it off we don't want it but that no longer exists. Same goes for method two here of disabling it through the registry. Adding this key no longer does anything, so don't bother doing this. And then method three still works, but it is a little bit different than how this is set up. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Pull up your settings, and then we need to go into the Windows security. So we're just gonna type Windows security, and we're just gonna go Windows security settings, and then we go to virus and threat protection, and then we go manage settings under here. And then we usually turn this off, but there's another really important one here, tamper protection. This was what was added in versions 2004 and 20H2 of Windows, which is the last couple versions of Windows 10. We would need to turn both these off to actually disable real-time protection. If you do have this on or off right here and you don't do tamper protection on reboot or any refresh or update, it will automatically re-enable your real-time protection. But you see, I've already have these off. We need to go a little deeper though, because this is not enough. Windows Defender is still hogging resources and those types of things, even with this off. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. Come on over to Task Scheduler. Task Scheduler is actually still widely used. And this is how, I, let's say I want to bypass user account control and other things. I usually do it through Task Scheduler because it's the easiest way. Come in here, hit Microsoft, Windows, and then go all the way down at the bottom. You'll see Windows Defender and you'll see all these different ones. Now, most people are tempted to just go delete, right? Don't do that. You're better off leaving those keys there or those tasks there. So when Microsoft goes to look at, hey, I want to run a cleanup, I want to run a scan, I want to try and do maintenance on it or verification, it'll go ahead and see that the key's already there, that task is already there, and it's disabled. Now, whether or not it'll get re-enabled, I think it's better off just to leave them there so they'll still register, but at the same time they're disabled so there's a less likely chance of it actually running and then the last one that shows like no defender and third-party tools again i really want to stay away from third-party tools i caution against doing this type of stuff and i really wish microsoft understood better that us users 
typically go for the easiest option here and installing third-party tools that do system modifications is a recipe for viruses and other things so i usually stay away from this type of thing but i want to at least let you know about it and just some other things that also, if you're watching this video, you should be cognizant of, I get a lot of comments about updates, Windows updates kind of taking over. Uh, I made a little how to optimize Windows 10 and this script I've actually done, Ultimate Tweak Script, and I'm about to do an update towards the end of this month. I'm gonna go ahead and run it real fast. Right here, the security section is in the middle of an overhaul. Because of some of these changes, just know that this won't really work. If you're curious or you want to go ahead and re-enable security on your system, I do highly recommend hitting the high security. This will enable Defender. It also makes some other good tweaks, such as disabling SMB 1.0 and other vulnerabilities that exist in most Windows out of the box. However, right here, Windows Update, I get asked about this all the time. I highly recommend hitting security updates only. This will fix 99.9% .9 of users update issues. This basically disables all feature updates. It delays your security updates four days, so they have some time for vetting. And it also just kind of makes your active time between I think 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. to where it'll only do updates overnight. And this is kind of an important thing for many users and something I highly recommend doing. Now, if there is a feature update or something that you want to do, just come back in here and hit default settings. And then you can easily go through your settings menu, go to updates, and then just hit check for updates and it'll be fine. You also see this. Some settings are managed by your organization. This will actually disable or actually disappear when you hit the default settings from the script. Uh, but yes, be looking for this. I think this will help so many people and figure out these two nuances, two windows that I think will really suck a lot of performance out of your box. If you're using it for gaming like me, again, that'll be really helpful. Now, as far as other tweaks, there's so much to go over and so many different things that you can do to your Windows install. And it's really important to, one, get a good backup of any time you touch or tweak your system. There's chances things can happen, so it's always important to be backing up your data. And I always highly recommend, before you do any kind of tweak, do that. It's important. And also, set a schedule to do this. Having a good backup is paramount. And I've done many videos over backups. So by all means, uh, I'll probably link to one or put it in the description on how to properly back up your computer. But I want to leave you with this. Be careful of Windows when it comes to a lot of these settings. Just know that sometimes when you tick these on and off, they don't necessarily stay. A lot of times they get re-enabled, things happen. Uh, and also I want to caution people from just completely ignoring them. There's a reason why Microsoft does this. They do it because a lot of users were silly and ended up infecting their computer or do something nasty, and that's why those are there. Uh, I personally don't like Defender. That's why I disable it. But it is better than nothing. If you just have some user that's just all over the internet downloading every EXE file on existence, they're probably going to get a virus. So please, if you're that user, don't do this. Also, don't disable updates. When I say security updates only, those security updates are important. It's just most of the other updates you get are garbage and I don't like. So just be careful out there. And when you take and try and do these tweaks, don't just blindly follow them. Think about why you'd want to do them. It's super important. And it's one thing that we need to follow. But with all that said, if you like this video, drop a like on the video. And if you haven't already, uh, let me know what your favorite part was or something that you'd like to see that you're having trouble with. That's how I make these videos is from the comment section. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.